Hello, Internet. My name is Vic. It's been a while. I know. It's been, it's been, it's been a quite a long while, actually. For me. Well, no, just kidding. I've taken longer hiatuses off of YouTube, but I know for a while there I was actually keeping up with uh, monthly updates. Sorry. I have flips. Pretty excited about that. I'm making this video today because I don't know when I will be able to record it um, again. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know anything. Um, I don't know what tomorrow holds, if there's going to be a tomorrow for me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't. At this point, I don't know anything. I really don't. Um, I laugh, but it's not. it's not funny. It's a very stressful thing to not know anything. So this is going to be a very um, serious, emotional, uh, non-emotional update um, recap video. So if you're not into that kind of thing and you're just like not really interested, go ahead and click off the video now because I can go ahead and guarantee you that this video is going to be lengthy um, confusing at times, and just all over the place, because I'm <laughs> all over the place. So yeah, all that said and everything, let's just get into this, because it's, it's a whole year I gotta cover. So, wow, um, if you've been keeping up with me and kind of watching my update videos or if you follow me on Instagram seeing my updates you'll know that you'll know all the changes I mean basically but this video I mainly make these videos for myself to look back on and see where I was at mentally and like physically and all that stuff so these videos are mainly for me but I put them on the internet because um, if I can inspire anyone or help anyone or educate anyone I would love to so yeah all that being said um, I just want to say I just want to start kind of going through what I've experienced this past year the very first change I noticed was bottom growth um, I have since become more comfortable with my lower area <laughs> I still don't use a word for it because I haven't quite found a word that I feel comfortable using other than lower region. So, uh, that was the very first change. Um, I think my confidence, obviously, was one of the first things I noticed. I just felt a, like a weight lifted off of me because for so many years, I was very anxious and dysphoric and... Um, impatient about starting hormones and once I finally did and I finally had my first shot it just was like a wave of relief a wave of just <sighs> like you could kind of you know shake it out type thing like it was just something that I had been craving for so long that I finally got it that it was just like a, a instant like relief um that was one of the first things I felt uh and I think, you know, emotionally, I wasn't as, I don't want to say invested, but, like, I was more focused on the physical changes of my body than I was, like, the mental attributes until about, I'd say, like, four months in, five months in. I don't know. If you look back on my Instagram posts, you'll find one. I, I'm pretty sure it was when I did my four-month voice update that I made a post about how my mentality was kind of like slipping um just like I've always struggled with anxiety and depression but like when it comes to being trans it's just like something on top of that like the dysphoria and the um the unsurety and the not being confident not feeling comfortable in your own skin that plus having depression anxiety is very very overwhelming depression and anxiety hand in hand are already super overwhelming because they're like two two like contradicting things it's like you know you've got your depression where it's like i don't want to move i don't want to do anything i don't i just don't i don't want to exist and then your anxiety is telling you like 
you've got to you've got to do something something's wrong like you've got to get up you've got to get up you're you're going to fail at life if you just stay in one spot and your depression's like fuck it i just want to stay in this one spot but that's mine and it's it's very tiring because it's like your mind is constantly going at a thousand miles an hour it doesn't matter what you're doing physically it's just your mind and that makes you tired um and all that with dysphoria and you know, gender things on top of it, it's like too much, it's too much. So when I started hormones, it was such a relief that that part of my struggle was not gone, but like subsided, not subsided, but like alleviate, like relieved. I don't know the word for it, but that doesn't mean that everything goes away. And everything is like cool and you feel good and you're great. No, far from it. Um, but for me, it was a distraction for a while. So for the first four months, I was so focused on, do I have a, a chin hair coming in? Do, do, do I have, um, yeah, okay, is my voice deeper? Let me, let me record that on the app. Um, is my face changing at all? Uh, my eyebrows are thicker, you know, my face is like wider now, um, hmm, what else is different, and I would spend hours just like in the mirror, you know, or like hours just like inspecting myself to try and find something new, different, you know, whatever, I was so consumed in that, um, and my girlfriend at the time, she was very, like, she was very patient, um, she put up with a lot, coming from me, I know it was kind of like, okay, there's more to life than your transition, you know, I I'm sure that was something that was on the back of her mind, but she was also very happy for me, and very supportive in my excitement, so it, you know, I'm not bad-mouthing, I'm just saying, like, I'm sure it was very taxing for her, um, so then, you know, once four months hit, I kind of, it kind of started, like, setting in that that was my routine, I take a shot every week, you know, um, it's like the adrenaline's gone, you know, I don't know. I mean, every time it's shot day, I get a little bit, like, on edge. Not, like, anxiety bad, but anxiety good. Like, yeah, I get my shot today, you know, and just look forward to that. Um, I used to take my shots in the morning on Mondays. Now I take my shots at night on Thursdays. Um, I didn't think that my shot day would always be the same, but I did think that it would always be the same. Does that make sense? Like, I didn't think I'd ever miss any shots. I've missed... Four? So, anyway, I'll get to that. Um, so then, after about four months in, five months, um, I was really having some, like, mental discovery, like, mental health um, progression. Uh, a lot of internal changes, um, self-realization, um, self-acceptance. A lot of that was going on. And then at six months on testosterone, I remember specifically because I was, I got sick. Um, that was around the time, six months, let's say November, December, January, February, March, April, May. It was May. Um, I, the flu was going around. So, um, I think t everybody in the house got sick, uh, where I was staying, except I didn't get the flu full flu, but I did get sick, and I remember, you know, being excited, because when you get sick, that voice drop will linger more when you're on T, um, so I got sick, and then a lot of personal things started happening around six months in May, um, a lot of personal shit, and I'm not gonna go into details, it's not for the internet, it's not for anyone else to really know, it's not anybody else's business. And then a lot of my focus shifted. Um, that was when I missed a couple shots. And that was when I first started doing my own shots. Um, up until that point, I had never done any of my own shots. Because I was scared. Anxiety. Um, it's a big needle. For someone who doesn't like shots. That's a big needle. Um, and the main reason like I, I like shots is because it's a testosterone shot. It's giving me my secondary sex characteristics. It's part of my medical transition. You know, I could go with the gel. I could go with the um, patch. 
but I'm seeing very, I'm very satisfied with the pace of my results on, on my, um, intermuscular shot. So I'm sticking with, um, IM shots. There are also sub Q, but I prefer IM, um, intermuscular for those of you who don't know what that stands for. So around six months, everything started kind of to spiral in my personal life, not my transition, but in my personal life. Um, I missed two shots. So I decided one day I was, I was at the house and it was, it was a couple days past shot day. And I was like, you know what? I got to do this myself. I got to do it myself. So I went on YouTube, six months on testosterone, went on YouTube and Google or Googled YouTube how to do intermuscular testosterone shot. I knew how to do it. Okay, don't get me wrong. I knew how to do it. I'd watched um, my girlfriend at the time do it many times. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'd watched her do it. So I knew how to do it, but I wasn't, like, confident in doing it. So I pulled up the tutorial. tutorial. It took me, like, four times to actually get the right amount in the syringe without an air bubble. Okay. Um, I don't even remember what dose I was at this at this point, but I did it, and it didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would because, I mean, obviously I was administrating it to myself. I did it kind of slower than she used to do it, but it still did not hurt. Um, I did it, and I was super proud of myself, and then after that, I pretty much did my own shots. I've done my own shots ever since then. Um, there have been a couple that she's done, but other than that, I've just done my own. Um, and it's like, it's a very satisfying feeling to do your own shot. Now, I'm just speaking for my personal, you may not like doing your own shot, if you've ever done your own shot, you might prefer somebody else to do it, but it's something about administrating it to yourself that just makes you feel good. These past couple months have been like a blur, um, just because I've been going through so much personal stuff, but I know that like the latest changes that I've noticed have been my facial hair. And, I mean, you can see it now. Beforehand, you couldn't see it um, as much. But now you can see it. Like, it's, it's getting darker. Um, I'm participating in No Shave November. I was kind of trimming up my uh, neck beard scruff to keep it lined up and neat and everything. And I was keeping these hairs, like, shorter. But now I'm just doing No Shave November. So it's been kind of nice. Um, I have yet, I have not shaved my mustache yet. The only thing I haven't shaved is my mustache. I've shaved everything else. My sideburns, um, my chin, my little chin strap, the underneath part, my neck. Like, I've shaved all that. And I can say from personal experience that shaving does not make it come in faster, thicker, darker, whatever. It doesn't. It just, it doesn't. This, these are still very wispy um, hairs, they are a little bit more stubbly, but they're still wispy when they get long. Um, but they're not thicker, darker, or nothing like that. They're just, they're just, like, they're just there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's very, it's a misconception. It really is. Um, I mean, you can see it more prominent, I guess, but maybe that's because when you shave... Your face looks naked because you don't real the first time because you don't realize how much your little peach fuzz is darkening your face. But then when it grows back, it's like oh. Um, but yeah, it's been grow it's been coming in. I mean, you can see it now. You know, I know in previous videos I'm talking about it and you can't even see it, but now you can actually like see it. So that's pretty cool. Um, another change that I've really been noticing recently is my hands have gotten wider. Um. I know I haven't really shown my hands on here. I busted a blood vessel. I'm not going to say how because it wasn't exactly legal. But there it is. Um, but my hands have actually gotten wider. Um, the veins, my veins and my hands have always been prominent, but they've gotten more prominent. My veins and my arms, see my veins? Probably not. This one is the more prominent one. When I'm picking something up, all these veins pop out of my arm. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Because that's my job is to lift stuff and move stuff. Um, also, like hair in general, everywhere. I'm hairy. I'm a very hairy person. My arms are hairy up here now. Um, I mean, my armpit hair hasn't gotten thicker really. It's just, it's. I mean, I've been growing that out for years. But, like, I have hair on my back, my ass. Um, my arms, my legs, my freaking 
stomach. I mean, it's everywhere. I don't really have chest hair yet, though. Yes, I do. Just kidding. Um, I'm just a very hairy person. Um, I've got Italian in me, so that's part of the hairiness happening. Um, a lot of old memory, I mean, not memories, a lot of old feelings are resurfacing, uh, intrusive thoughts, suicidal thoughts, d depression, um, urging, ur urges to self-harm, I mean, all those. But this time around, they're not over dysphoria. They're over emotions, which is, you know, like... So one of the things I've learned on hormones, which was a very, a very obvious misconception, is you don't become an emotionless dick, auntie. You don't become like this distant, absent-minded, mysterious person where you just don't feel anything and you don't care. Um, you just process differently. Does, does that does that make sense? Does that make sense? I, I may offend... <laughs> I may offend some people when I explain what I mean, but you know what? If I offend you, comment why, and we can discuss it like adults instead of just being like, you're an asshole. I know I'm an asshole, but why am I an asshole? Let's discuss. So... When... Before hormones... I thought with my emotions. Does that make sense? I was very impulsive. I'm still very impulsive, but I'm less impulsive. So, before hormones, I was very, like, focused on, okay, this is how I feel, and this is how I'm going to react right now. Um, th this is, like, I have to react, uh, I have to answer, I have to respond, and I'm upset, so... Let's just respond with emotion. I'm going to cry, I'm going to whine, I'm going to complain, or I'm going to lash out, or I'm going to hit something, or I'm going to, like, go off. I mean, whatever emotion I was feeling, I would feel it very strongly, and I would use it as a reason to, like, explode or emote very strongly and overwhelmingly before hormones. Since being on hormones for a year, um, a lot has changed. Now, I can't say as soon as I had that first dose of testosterone enter my body that I was instantly like, hmm, I'm going to start logically running through every bullet point, coming completely to the conclusion I want to come to. With all the facts gathered, I will not react in an impulsive, like, fiery, rapid reaction, I will very thoroughly explain my thought-out mental analysis of what... No, it wasn't like that. I did have to kind of grow and figure out what that was and learn how to do it. Um, it's no more about me proving a point and forcing someone to believe how I believe or feel how I feel or acknowledge my existence even, it's not about proving to somebody that I'm a man anymore. Because I know I'm a man. I identify as a man. Therefore, I am one. Um, it's not about making everybody else see it. Um, it's just not. So now, when something doesn't go my way, or when something happens or is said that would have hurt past me, current me is like, okay, let me process this. Let me figure out why they're feeling the way they're feeling. Let me step in their shoes for a sec. I'm currently becoming, or learning to become okay with my own company. If that makes sense. I'm trying to get to the point where I'm like comfortable with myself to be alone. Um, and that's where I'm struggling right now. Being on my lonesome, being on my own, being by myself and being okay with it. Um, because I've spent a majority of my life in a relationship. Not a majority of my life, but a majority of my adult life in a relationship. And I haven't really got to know adult Vic. I haven't really got to know who I am and who I want to be. I haven't really gotten to know, like, 
um, older, more mature me. I know emotional, emo, like, woe is me, self-deprecating, little shit Vic. But I don't know this guy that I'm turning into, growing into, I like it. In some aspects, but in some aspects I don't. I'm becoming more vocal. I'm telling people how I feel straight up now. I don't really try and sugarcoat anything anymore. Um, I'm trying to become more, like, aggressive with being vocal. Uh, not necessarily aggressive, but more assertive. Um, if something rubs me the wrong way or I feel weird about it, I'll say it right then and there instead of waiting to bring it up later. Um, I'm not as worried about stepping on toes as I was, or walking on eggshells, or whatever you want to call it. Let's see. Uh, my voice? My voice. My voice has gotten very deep. I'm still learning how to be me, without the influence of other people. I'm learning what I'm comfortable with, what I'm not comfortable with, what kind of boundaries to set. I'm still learning all that. Um, but as far as, like transformation like physical outward appearance um i'm really satisfied with how i look my muscle mass i'm building a lot more muscle mass i'm taking up more space <laughs> i'm getting wider broader when i look back at old pictures of myself i'm like where are my shoulders at you know what i'm saying or like my head looks really small i still have a small head but my face is like it's the jawline it's more like defined, you know, my chin. I've always had stronger jaw features, but now it's more like angular. You can see it. It, it It's like, it's an angle. You can't, you can't not see that. Uh, my, my hairline hasn't changed. My chest, my cup size has gone like drastically down. Um, I still wear my binder. But I need to get a smaller binder. I wear a medium, but I need a small now because I'm I've lost so much weight in my chest that my binder's loose. Yeah, um, but it it still holds what I I do have in place, but it's not as tight now. So I don't have a menstrual cycle anymore. Um, I haven't had one of those since December of last year. But yeah, that's about it. I haven't really changed anywhere else physically. Um, but yeah, that's been my year. Uh, if any of you want me to talk further about anything, let me know. I know I kind of like sped through the last part of this video. But again, just keep an eye on my Instagram for more frequent updates. Um, message me on there or on here or comment there or here and let me know if you have any questions i will gladly answer those any specifics because let's be real it's been a year a lot's happened i'm not the same person i was in the beginning of 2019 i did start hormones in 2018 but it was november so like the year is is different than like january to december but november to november I am not the same person I was at all. I don't even look the same, I don't sound the same, and I don't think the same or feel the same. I feel completely different and think completely different and look different. And it's just a lot has changed in such a short amount of time. A year is not that long. Especially the older I've gotten, the more I've noticed years kind of just fly by. My birth month, October. It's like I blinked. I turned 28 and I blinked and it was November. And I was like, whoa, what is going on? Um, I think it's just because I'm getting older. Maybe it's because I'm having my quarter life crisis. I don't know. But there's that. There's my transformation in a year. If your intention is to hurt me or to talk shit, don't even bother. But if your question is genuine and you really want to know and it's a genuine question because of curiosity or educational purposes, no question is too personal or TMI or whatever. But if you're just trying to be a dick and ask stupid, like, offensive, hurtful questions just because, don't even bother. Don't. I don't have time for that. But thank you for tuning in and listening to me ramble about things and <laughs>
yeah, I hope y'all have a good one. And, um, stay strong out there.